Hello and welcome back everybody. Minnesota Sports Daily is the channel and thanks for coming. Leave us while you're here. You know, if you're a fan of the Wild, the Wolves, Twins, Vikings, any of the four, subscribe. We're at what, 220 right now? Let's bump it up. Let's keep going. Sweet. All right. All right. Today, we're going to talk about the Minnesota Wild and where they stand with Kirill Kaprizov and Kevin Fiala. Now, a couple days ago, I made a video just talking about the offseason as a whole, just talking about everything. But today, I want to focus on the two most important pieces of the offseason and two things that are yet to be resolved. Kirill Kaprizov, Kevin Fiala. The two most important players, two best players, two that were supposed to be kind of locked up here long term, but just aren't yet. This offseason has been rough for the Wild. I just went over that. It wasn't supposed to be this way. All started with Yol Eriks next, getting himself a very nice contract extension, and it was thought Kaprizov and Fiala would be next. Not the case so far. Both negotiations are different in some ways, also similar in some, also different and similar in the same way that they can't really go any, to any other team. They either come back to the Wild, or they stop playing in the NHL. Kirill Kaprizov has one option. Go back to Russia. Well, two options, Russia or the Wild. If he wants to leave the Wild, he can go back to Moscow. He can do that. Probably get a good amount of money, but it's the NHL. If he wants to play in the NHL, he should sign here, obviously. That's his only option. But if he really wants to go to Moscow, why hasn't he done it by now? It's all a negotiation tactic, and one that's really annoying. Kevin Fiala. He's been brought to arbitration with the Wild. He can't go to any other team, any other NHL team. He can just stop playing if he wants, but I don't think he does. The only way for him to get off of being in the wild is to either be traded or just not be brought back, which won't happen. So, what's keeping these two players away? Surprise, surprise, money and term of contract. Kirill's being offered an eight-year contract for around $10 million per season. And Kevin Fiala wants something close to that, I'm sure. Kaprizov, but, you know, he's Kaprizov's being offered the eight for 10 mil. He wants a three-year deal for about 10 mil, so he can play here for three years, hit free agency, and then go play in, like, New York or something. Fiala wants the long-term deal. He wants the one around $8 million for eight years or so, I'd say. Eight years, seven mil would get it done. But the Wild don't think he's worth that. They think he's around four mil. So, instead of, you know, instead of that, he'll be signing a one-year deal worth around $5 million because he has gone to arbitration. Now, arbitration, I made a video on that as well, with Fiala a while back. But the Wild elected to go to salary arb with Kevin Fiala. Basically, that guarantees he'll have a contract by this Tuesday that keeps him in Minnesota. That contract has one salary number submitted by both Fiala and by the Wild. The Wild think he's worth 4 mil. Fiala thinks he's worth 6.25 mil. They'll probably meet in the middle. I'm sure Fiala will be here on like a one-year, $5 million deal. Now, by Tuesday, it's Sunday right now, they have time to go get a deal done. A long-term deal if that's what Fiala really wants to do. He could for probably four to five million mil a year. Does he want to go that route? We'll see. I don't know for sure, but this is this Tuesday, if they don't come to that long-term deal, then an arbiter decides what Fiala is worth using those two salary submissions. The four mil from Minnesota and the six point two five from Fiala. As I talk about this, it's late afternoon Sunday, and the two have not agreed on a deal. They could do that, but if not, again, it'll go to arbitration. Expect him, I think this is interesting, I think he's going to play very motivated, knowing the Wild don't think he's worth even $5 million. The Wild are just saying, you're worth four, Kevin, sorry. And Fiala thinks he's worth at least 6.25 mil. I think Fiala's going to have a big year, knowing that. And knowing that, once again, after this year, he's probably going to have another contract discussion upcoming. He's going to want that long term again. He's going to play really well. If he's consistent, he gets it, I think. That's what it comes down to for Fiala. But then moving on to discussing Kirill the Thrill Kaprizov a bit more. Let's just finish this, alright? This has been going on since the beginning of the offseason, and it's not something anyone really foresaw. Foresaw? Foreseen? Foresaw. If you were actually going to return to Russia, as I said earlier, you would have done it by now, Kirill. Obviously, he wants to play in the NHL. He's done everything he can in the KHL. It's time to prove you can keep doing it in the NHL. He's done it for, what, 60 games? He played really well. He played like a superstar in those 60 games. And again, the Calder winner last year, 55 games, excuse me, he had 27 goals, 24 assists, 51, 51 points in 55 games, plus minus of 10. He played really well. He was really good, but he's played 55 games in the NHL, and he made the Wild wait for about five years for him to show up. You know, there were a couple years where the Wild thought Kaprizov was going to come over, but he stayed in Russia. Now, he thinks he can just, him and his agent, just go, well, we don't want eight years, we want three. That's not good. Kirill Kaprizov, who's played just six, 55 regular season games. It's not great. Doesn't make much sense, but I have to wonder just how much Kirill is having, how much of a say Kirill is having in what's happening behind the scenes over there. I get the feeling Kaprizov ended this season in a random place called Minnesota, 
stayed in a hotel room, didn't really know anybody, didn't really get to go out much. Went back home and thought, you know, it wouldn't be too bad, but he wants to play in the NHL. And he just kind of probably told his agent, hey, get me the best deal possible. You can use Russia as a negotiation tactic. Do what you got to do. Now a few months into all this, it's become an extremely uncomfortable situation for everyone involved. And I have to wonder if Kaprizov really, how much does he actually know what's going on behind the scenes? His, this is a horrible look for him. I think it is. The fran this franchise wants to make you the highest player in franchise history for about eight years. Just a max, pretty much. And he's continuously been saying no and just refusing to negotiate more. He's been, like four years is his max right now, it seems. That's absurd. Bill Guerin wants to pay him like a superstar after 55 games, and he's not accepting it. It's, it's unreal. Both will be resolved, I'm sure, by the time September rolls around. I hope. An offseason that was thought by some, including me, that could potentially push for a Stanley Cup, go from a first-round playoff exit to a Stanley Cup contender, has really just been awkward, a lot of waiting, a lot of going, all right, another Kirill Russia rumor, fun. So I want to stand. I want both of them to come back, and I think they both will. But my god, is this awkward. The Wilders are supposed to go get a number one center this offseason. They can't even bring their two star wings back, but here we are. Alright, I don't blame Garen either. He's doing everything he can. I sh he shouldn't budge off his eight-year max contract. That's huge. That's about all I got for today. Check it out. Uh, link All the links in bio. Find everything I do. But for now, peace.